enormous. It's a, a huge library of things that could easily intimidate the new startup. And while that's not my intention, it's not meant to keep you bogged down in continuous study, uh, the 2022, this is the proper order, okay? This is the definitive order that ends all requests for it, okay? <laughs> I will include it in my very first presentation in 2023 as well in video format, but basically I'm going to say it here in short, well, right to the point in terms. If you have never really studied, or if you are a casual viewer of my YouTube channel, and you kind of like picked, cherry-picked moves and to certain video series or grabbed a video off of a, a suggested timeline from the YouTube algorithm, that's the worst way to do it, okay? That's the absolute worst way to do it. You need to sit down, number one, and come up with a mission statement. Why would you even want to look at me or anyone else? Why would you want to study what brought you to me? Okay. There's a lot of things that people can say about me as a person and that person's flawed. I'm a human, just like the rest of you. But my content is me being distilled into the essence of a trader, an analyst, an educator, a mentor. So your mission statement needs to be written out in a study journal. Now do this with whoever you go and you know become a mentee under. Okay, if you choose someone else as a mentor, you need to do the same thing. Okay. But you need to come up with a mission statement as to why you're even investing your time and energy into any any individual. What brings value? Where's the value? Where's the source of interest where's the proof that there's someone that is worth listening to okay so there was a long time where folks just simply because i would just deny them i would de i would deny them live trading i would deny that and i did that for a very particular reason number one in the united states i i have the luxury of being protected by demo account education and the folks that would learn under me that can see through that and say, okay, if I can see it in a demo account and that's price, then it should work in a live account. And that invitation for you to test it was built in. So I don't, I don't want any of you to believe me. I want you to test what I said and teach. So that's what your mission statement should be for any mentor. Okay. You've seen enough to be inspired or inquisitive enough to go in to see what it is that makes that person worthy. Okay, so obviously this year you've seen lots of people step forward all around the world, different walks of life. They're doing it. They're proving that they're getting funded. They're proving they're taking money out of the marketplace and they're crediting what they learned from me. And I'm very thankful and appreciative. That's all I've ever asked for. And that mission statement needs to be spelled out for you. Why are you trying to learn from me or anyone else? You, what, does it, what would a mission statement look like? What would it, an example be? My goal is to harvest all of the insights that Michael J. Huddleston is divulging to the public in his YouTube videos in hopes that it will help me form a unique model for trading the market, not markets, a very specific market, okay? This is the problem that I have with my students, even in paid mentorship group. They wanna trade everything based on the next move or whatever just popped up. You need to be very specific. All of you have witnessed how I transitioned away from Forex, and I give you multiple reasons why I'm not trading Forex anymore. I have no interest in going back into Forex, none, okay? Went back to where I, I started in commodities. So I'm trading index futures. And you can see the things that I used and implemented in Forex works equally well in index futures. But it's better because of the volatility presently. Now, there were times when Forex was better than index futures. But index futures has always been steady eddy. It's always been a good move. 
a moving market. But when there's a wild excitement in the marketplace and the currencies, you know, that's you know, that was a fun time to be in it. But right now, there's high elevated risk. So you need to be able to determine what market, what singular market are you going to specialize in? Okay. The wonderful thing is and my concepts are universal. So you can pick a particular market of interest. Maybe you had someone that was a catalyst for in introducing me or you to me, and they were trading euro dollar, or they were trading maybe a crypto. I don't trade crypto. I have no faith in crypto, but I have a lot of students that use my concept in it. Maybe that was the, the vehicle that you want to trade or instrument you want to trade. But in your mission statement that is in the first page of your study journal, you don't have a study journal, you need to start one. You need to get one because this is where you're going to pour all of your questions and concerns and your fears and your victories, these milestones, because it's not the same as just simply tweeting to me or other people in your circle that you did this trade and look at panned out and you're not sharing the 50 that you did it wrong. Okay, you have selective sharing and this is the reason why you have to have a mission statement at the beginning of your study journal. What is it you're focusing on? What type of trading are you going to be doing? Are you going to be a scalper intraday? Are you going to be trading daily range intraday swings? Are you going to be short term trading? Are you trading overnight, maybe a few days whole time? Are you going to be swing trading? Are you trading for about two weeks or so? Are you position trading where you're longer than two weeks into several months or even longer? You need to be very specific about what it is you're doing. And every single time, it's going to be monotonous. It's going to feel silly. It's going to feel, I don't need to do this. But every single time you open up that study journal, you read that mission statement. Every single time you sit down with your demo account to practice and study, you read that mission statement. Because it's so easy to get caught up in social media, the competitive nature of who's teaching what, and who's better than this. and who. You, you got to remind yourself what you're doing. Because it's so easy to get caught up in all the drama of your own development and other people like myself, I'm very polarizing. There isn't a, you know, a wide collective group that just simply love me in a small little, uh, you know, small little group that has opposition to what I do. I have a lot of competition with people that sell courses and wares and things. They don't like what I'm doing because I've laid it in your hands for free. Even my own paid membership groups, you know, members were pissed off because I gave out the core content, but they've learned that it didn't do anything, didn't change anything. It didn't take away from their experience. So you need to be able to remind yourself why you're studying, what you're studying, and what the purpose and the end result is. What is that? You're trying to learn how to be consist consistently profitable in one endeavor, not everything. Okay. You're not here to master everything ICT. That's a number one root cause of failure in my private mentorship group because they were given all kinds of highly specific details about how algorithmic trading is built, done, and utilized in the marketplace. And it's an invitation for them to decide where they want to focus. Now, everybody wants the 2022 mentorship. You saw how simple that model is. It's very, very simple. Every single model can be made that simple using my content. And the content could be replacing simply the fair value gap with an order block or a breaker, institutional order flow entry drill. Okay. Whatever, or a turtle soup, my version of turtle soup, not uh, Street Smart's version where it's 20 days you know, high or 20 days low or 20 plus one turtle soup. I, I don't need to look at the last 20 days. I can just look at where's the last swing high. And if I'm bearish, I'm looking for that move to run above to engage that buy side liquidity. And then I'll look for a shift in market structure. Or I can, if I'm real ballsy about it, I'm confident, I'll just sell those buy stops when it hits it. And then look for an additional pyramid entry for a shift in market structure, much like what that 2022 model teaches in mentorship on the YouTube channel. So you want to spell out exactly what you're trying to form in terms of your model. Now, if you have never seen the 2022 mentorship, you don't know what a model is. You don't know what an example of a model is. Okay. And that's the number one first choice for anyone coming into my fold 
to study or if you were very lazy okay and i mean that not in a mean way but if you you come and go and, and you've been here you've left and you tasted other stuff and traded other things and you just keep coming back you keep coming back because you know this stuff works you just can't find a way to make it work for you and i understand i have students like i said even from 2016 that are still struggling but i have students from each group that are doing well it's a personal hindrance that you're bringing into this so you have to be organized and we're getting ready to go into a new year go through the 2022 mentorship videos once more and only watch one per per day one per day that's it treat it just like that when you were going to college you know you didn't go to that class all day long okay you went in for that time and you were dismissed and then you had to consider what it is you learned so 2022 mentorship that's the absolute very first one because it gives you a example of what it is if you studied everything on my channel you can come to that type of model very very streamlined you're not bringing everything into the equation and that's the problem that my paid membership uh, students sometimes do because they see i have a lot of tools they think foolishly and i've said this many times and i'm repeating it again for those that have ever doubted it i do not include every possible analysis tool or concept every single time i sit down in front of the charts i would never get a trade on because they would be in opposition with one another. You know, there would never be a, a confluence of all of my tools agreeing with one idea. And I'm not looking at commitment to traders for every single trade. And for intraday, I don't even need it. I'm not looking for every facet or component that I teach to be in agreement for a trade idea. And the folks that have learned under me or watched a couple videos and they say, okay, and, and, it, and I was reinforced with this percep perception of how my students digest this content. One of the folks I just tweeted a link to, uh, he did a review on, uh, I guess, the 2022 mentorship group or whatever, and me as a, as a mentor. And I, I thought that it was the best review, and I shared it on Twitter. You guys can go look at it. It's got the guy's uh, channel is Kimmel Trading. I don't know him. It was the first time I watched his video. And... I thought he did a really good job. It was balanced. And you listen and you hear how he's an individual that mentioned how he struggled with certain things. And that is a recurring thing, a reoccurring thing in smart money concepts because these people take my concepts and they dilute it and make their own little mentorships. And they leave out real critical pieces of understanding and they're trying to streamline it so much because they want to they want to satisfy that itch for the give it to me right now crowd give it to me right now get right to the point crowd and there is no get right to the point shorter and more direct than that 2022 mentorship i swear to god almighty if there was an easier way for me to have made it easier more simple more right to the point i would have i absolutely would have done it but there is no because there's so many things that you have yet to understand that you're going to encounter because you can just watch those first couple of videos and get the gist of it but what happens is is when you start implementing it and, and a suggestion would be using 2022 mentorship model as your mission statement you want to use that one you may not settle in on that as your own final resting place for a model of choice or your career it may evolve into using breakers instead of the fair value gap. But fair value gap is the easiest visual representation of a PD array that I teach algorithmically. It, it's something that repeats on all time frames, and I'm confident, confident my daughter could see it, but she's not interested. <laughs> and I'm thankful there's some people around the world that are absolutely killing it now, and I'm, I love it. But if you go through the 2020 mentorship and use that as your beginning point, once you go through that and you submitted to what I've outlined in every one of those videos, you're going to see that it requires much more than just simply watching the first couple of videos. And I watched another guy um, that was suggested or mentioned in Kimmel Trading's video that I watched about me. He mentioned a gentleman by the name of Michael Bamble, Bamber, Michael Bamber, another person I've never known about. Um, 
I watched one of his videos while he shifted uh, his strategies into smart money concepts, ICT, whatever. Uh, just for the record, when you say SMC, you're really saying ICT, okay? It, it's it's my content, and I introduced it as smart money concepts, but they want to keep my name out of it because it allows them to sound unique. But I love the fact that these people are waking up to it and they're realizing it came from me, and I'll, I'll push your channel. Like, I have no problem saying, hey, look, you're doing it right now, and you don't have to worship me. I don't want that. Just Give credit where it's due. But he mentioned in his video, Mike, this guy, um, Michael Bamber, that he watched a couple of videos in the mentorship and because he had experience already, he's like, well, let me go out there and just try to test it right now. That's a mistake. And so many people, not just with my concepts, but everything. And I did the same thing as a new guy. When I was 20 years old, I was buying books and courses and such. And real quick, let me plug this. Uh, one of the students sent me a DVD version of Larry Williams confidential trading course. You know, the one I told you I had VHS. I played it so many times it, it wore out. And I wish I had been able, I could tell you verbatim what he's gonna say because I've watched it so many times. But it's such a, a nostalgic piece of my coming up. It's just I wish I would have had it. Well, this gentleman purchased it for me and sent it to me. I'm so thankful. I haven't watched it yet, <laughs> but I bought everything. Okay, I bought every single thing out there and every book that was supposedly hot and, and teaching this and teaching that. And as soon as I read a chapter and I thought I saw something in there, I was like, I'm going in there. I'm going to do it today. I would turn my Metastock program on, pull up the chart, and I'd go in there and I'd start putting orders in. And then I would fail because I'm interested in getting what? Instant gratification. And unfortunately, social media has adopted this mindset where that's a normal thing. And you should pursue that. No, 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 no. And in investing and trading, there's such a high degree of risk. And this is the reason. This is the reason why I teach the way I teach. That you shouldn't be in here trying to double your account or having astronomical monthly returns or weekly returns or daily returns or two hundred to one. I, I never preach that. You can do very, very well with one to one, two to one, and three to one. But I personally try to teach my students aim for five to one. Will they always get it? No. Will I always get it? No. So to build that mindset or expectation into students is foolish as a mentor, and I never do that. So I talk about how you're going to lose all the time. You're going to lose money. You learn with me, you're going to lose money. You're going to make money if you do the right things, but that right thing has to be a unique experience for you. You may not like that fair value gap. You may not be able to see it because you see all kinds of gaps and you think, okay, well, ICT mentioned a breakaway gap, a measuring gap, an exhaustion gap, and a common gap. Which fair value gap is that one? Well, that comes with experience and knowing what these price swings look like from all higher time frame down to lower time frame. So back to this guy, Michael Bamber. He rushed in, and I'm only going by what he said in his video, okay? So it might've been a unique experience at that time. He's probably in, you know done better since then. I have not watched anything except for that one video, but I, it struck me as this is something that even my private mentorship students, you know, when they were getting new content each month, they would go out and rush and right into trying to use it and then send me an email or post in the forum when they became a charter member. You know, I tried to use this and this was a struggling point for me or it didn't work for me. And other people would come behind, well, I'm using it and here's my examples of it. So again, that kind of cancels out that they fail as concepts it goes back to the very painful reality that it's you when i lose money it's my fault when you lose money it's your fault when i make money it's my victory when you make money it's your victory it's not a high five moment for thanks ict Psh, high five i didn't do that for you you took the risk on when you took the live trade that's why i tell you you will determine when you want to transition from a demo account or paper trading into live account trading. I never, ever tell any of my students to do that. It's a personal moment where you know where it's going to happen, but you need to defer that. And the problem with this right now, give me a quick you know, study approach where I, I get it. Everybody wants to start making money. Everybody wants to live a, a fast life. But let me tell you something. I've made so much more money teaching than I did trading. I can tell you honestly, that's what 99.9999999999% of everybody on social media, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, all of them, all of them 
made majority of, if not all of their money from teaching. And I'm honest, I'm telling you that, that that's, that's the reality of it all. But I'm also the same guy that said, but I don't need to do that. I'm done. I showed you I can walk away from it so you can trust me as a mentor. I'm not trying to fleece you. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you do well. But you have to listen to the boring stuff. You have to get through those monotonous rants where it feels like get to the point. The point is you're going to, in, you're going to endure moments where it's going to feel like it doesn't work or you're going to have questions about why doesn't this concept work in this instance? If you realize what I'm talking about, when I'm doing these discussions, I'm, I'm fortifying you mentally to be able to endure that because that's where everybody quits. Those moments, that's where everybody, everybody, everybody loves it. They're walking around with perpetual erections you know, in the male category of my students when they're making money. They're walking around, and I'm going to tell you something. When they do the right things with ICT concept, that is Viagra, okay? Guaranteed girlfriends and wives are satisfied. Okay, they're getting everything they get hoped for for the weekend or that evening. But when they don't listen to sound logic, okay, it's dysfunction. <laughs> it's dysfunction. And it takes the wind out of your sails completely. And for those of you that are male, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You could be going to the gym working out. You could be fit as a fiddle. You could be having the right duds. You could be dressed out and macked out with all the nice whips and cars and you're doing well. But when you lose, and you know you did it to yourself, it sucks. You don't want to be looked at by anybody else. You don't want to be judged by anybody else. You don't even want to talk about charting. You don't even talk about trading. You want to ignore it. Well, those moments, unless you rein that in properly, that will lead into a tailspin because you're going to want to fix that, that bad feeling, that toxic feeling of in, you know, a small little segment of failure. That's not the end of your career, but if you have not been properly mentored and spoken to with mindset, how do you how do you wrestle with the struggles of doing this? Because it's one thing to talk about this is what works in this instance in the marketplace, but what happens when you do it wrong, understandably in the beginning, because you're learning, you're getting an experience. Every, every time you sit down and you study the market, if you're using that 2022 mentorship model, you, you have a specific expectation in the marketplace. In every transaction and time invested, you're getting experience from it. It may not be a positive one where you come out where, oh, I would have made money if I would have did this. If you go into this initially expecting that as a constant or majority of the results, you're going to be discouraged. Why? Doesn't this stuff work, Michael? Yes, it does. But it works well in the hands of an apt pupil, someone that's been doing all the things, taking notes, studying, using all the supportive lessons beyond the first five or so videos in that mentorship uh, series. I saw a young man tweet to me the other day. He said, yeah, I watched the first couple of videos, and I figured it out from that point on. I'm doing great. I don't like those comments, and I'm not going to high-five that because you don't know what you're doing. And I have no problem telling you that. And it's my content. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. If I just if I thought it was just the first few videos that were necessary, that's all I would have done. But you need supportive understanding and, and things that you're going to in, encounter. When does a fair value gap likely fail? When do you classify it as something other than a trade entry or target? These are all going to be problems for you when you start pushing a button, whether it be demo, paper trading, or foolishly entering into live trading too soon. You want to go in with your mission statement read every single time before you watch a video. So that way you're reminding yourself, okay, I can talk about a lot of things, and you will be able to filter out the things where I'm talking about other people because I got to get it off my chest. And reminding everyone that this is really where you're supposed to be finding it from, not watered down versions of it. But then you'll go into harvesting and pulling out the things that the meat, you'll get to what it is, the point. Everybody's saying get to the point. The point is you're getting the stuff that makes you better as a trader because I've already taught you how to trade. I've taught everybody how to do that. But how do you become a consistently profitable trader? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. You get 
that by listening to someone that's endured lots of losing and the things that I did to stem that and keep it at bay and also in in many ways understand the pitfalls that lead to that and that stuff when you're young as a developing student and this is for females too not just the males i'm not beating up on you guys only this culture that we have today <clears throat> it is give it to me right now and if you can't give it to me right now i'm unsubscribing good unsubscribe because the way i teach i do it in such a way where i'm filtering people out and that pisses people off and I want them to lose their mind initially because if you're going to lose your mind about me and how I teach, because I know how this is learned. I know how it's taught properly, but I also know there's going to be problem personalities that are going to be problem traders. And the problem traders are going to be the ones that complain and say, oh, you're a fraud. Oh, your shit doesn't work. Oh, you never do this. And oh, you never do that. But 2022, I came out with all the receipts. And now people all around the world are doing it too. So there's no way, absolutely fucking no way, anybody can stand anywhere. And I'm ready for it. I'll trade in fucking court. Okay, I will do it. I will bring my fucking shit and I will show everybody. Everybody in there will be fucking watching my YouTube channel. The judge will be fucking subscribed to fucking YouTube. I don't give a fuck. Let's go. But there are people that are not mentally prepared to suffer in their own hands. And that's what you're going to do as a trader. And nobody says it like that, but that's exactly what it is. You put yourself, I put myself, we all put ourselves in situations where it absolutely is painful and loss will, will be the result. There is not ever been a trader that has ever gone out there and done it 100%. I lose. I lose. Okay. I get it wrong sometimes. Okay. Bottom line is, is, it doesn't kill me to the point where I'm going to give up or toss out the concept. You know, that model, that 2022 model, it can look like it's really in the chart and your analysis line up like, hey, man, I'm going to do this trade. And you put the trade on, whether it's paper, demo, or live, and it will fail sometimes. It didn't fail. You did. When I do it wrong, I do it wrong. And I record it that way in my journal. You need to record it in your journal that way too. If you do that, number one, it teaches and fortifies personal responsibility. And when you're basically inputting that in your journal, every single time you do it, you're going to have also increments where you'll have it done right. And that, that, that's the key. That's, the, that's the, the superpower juice, if you want to call it, that keeps you going. Because I could tell you anything in these rants and these discussions that you might find encouraging. You might find that um, that little nudge that you need to keep going. No problem. But even me talking to you and encouraging you won't take away every bit of it. It just distracts you from what you were thinking and feeling. And when you stop listening to these things, you'll remember that you did major damage to yourself. You overtraded. You did more trades than you should have. You listened to somebody else on social media that influenced you, and you wrecked your ass. That That's painful. It sucks. And this is the reason why I say don't go and try to keep up a equity curve on social media. Equity curves on social media is toxic. You're trying to keep up with everybody else, and 99% of these fuckers are out here are fake. They're pretend. They can't. They can't. They're running reports, making hundred thousand dollars in hypothetical results, but they ain't fucking doing it. So I want to see that in 2023. I want to see all that real shit. Not I'm running, you know, <laughs> market replay shit. If it can be done, you'll do it in real, real money, and I'm waiting for it. But you have to have a, a, an approach to doing this with a sober mindset and it, and coming in, starting right away with the model of 2022, it gives you the nuts and bolts. This is what it looks like. This is what a model looks like. This is what trading looks like. This is how you go in. You decipher what market bias will look like. Where do you place your stop loss? How do you take partials? 
When do you stop? When do you trade in the day? Do you sit down and trade all day long, 24 hours a day? Fuck no, you don't do that. Nobody should be doing that as a new student. Nobody. And any fucking asshole going out there saying that they should do that, they're fucking clowns. There's advantages to trading the times I've told you. Period. Now, but ICT, you trade it outside. Yes, I do that. The thumb my nose that everybody says I have only certain times of the day where I trade and I can do that. I do everything. And I, anything I want, I can step in there and do it. But because I can do it doesn't mean it's an invitation for you to try to replicate what I do because you don't have the experience. You don't have the tools. You don't have all the resources I have that allow me to do those types of things. But I've given you a specific model that allows you to have a foundation that puts you right in the charts, and that's where you should begin. Now, what should you do if you've gone through the 2022 mentorship and you're consistently finding setups, not 100% accurate, but you're consistently finding setups? and you're consistent in your paper trading. The question is going to be, how will you know when to go into live trading? You'll know that when you know it. Nobody will convince you otherwise. That's how you know. I never tell any of my students, go and start trading live. That never happens. Never happened. I've never had a paid member you know, talk to me in an email or in the forum, and never, ever have I ever done publicly said, go into live trading. No. If they've said, I'm going into live trading, I immediately go in with go slow, don't trade a lot, and keep your risk ultra light. It's all public because I know what happens, and they're going to find out too, and just like you will if you ever go from paper and demo to live trading, some little magical experience takes place where suddenly doubt, fear, trepidation goes off the charts. You abandon everything you learned, and you become more interested in protecting your first trade. So it's actually better for you just to flip a fucking coin, buy or sell based on heads or tails, okay? Just get that shit out of the way. The first trade, you're all going to worry about whether if it's a winning trade or a losing trade. Just put it in the, in the hands of risk. Um, I'm sorry, put the risk in, in the hands of uh, chance. Put it the smallest amount of leverage you could possibly have on the trade, and if you know, you think you want to take a trade and you're worried about whether or not you're going to be right or wrong, just flip a coin. If it's heads, you buy it. If it's tails, you sell it. And then whatever happens, you got it out of the way. It's done. It's one transaction. You've lost your virginity in terms of live trading. That fear is gone now. So now just work going forward. I remember the first… My first trade with Fox Investments, where you know I bought that orange juice option and lost fifty percent overnight. Very first trade, I was scared shitless. I was like, man, do I do this? Do I do this? Do I do this? And I was, I just couldn't stand it anymore. I was afraid to miss it, and I was afraid to do it. So I just said, fuck it, I'm just doing it. And I put order in, and it was done. And then next day, I woke up, I, I lost fifty percent of the amount of money I put into the option. No idea what I was doing. But that relief of having done it and got it out of the way, that fear and trepidation was gone. Even though I lost 50% of the option premium I paid for in my very first trade. Now think about this. Go back to the mission statement I was talking about. When I first sat down to learn how to trade, I was going to be a commodity trader, and I was going to trade position trading. But my first trade wasn't based on that. It was based on… Three days using an option. What the fuck was I doing that for? I was in a hurry to be doing something. And that's what a lot of you are doing. You watch a couple of videos, whether it be mine or someone else's, and you think you saw this before, and you go into the chart, and you're looking for something that resembles what you think you've learned in one or two videos. And then you push a button, and then you're shocked. At the results not being what you expected. That's doing it wrong. My children have messed around in paper trading and demo accounts doing the same thing. It's normal. It's normal. You wanted to be able to sit down, watch a video or two, and then go in there and be able to find something that banks, investment firms, you know, big, huge trading 
entities are in here running roughshod over everybody with. And you think you're going to watch a couple ICD videos or anybody else's bullshit and walk out there and push a couple buttons and all of a sudden all of this starts falling in your hands and you're rich now? Man, I've never taught that. I've never taught that at all. I have been the largest opponent to that shit than anybody else on YouTube. That's what makes me boring because I'm not out there being that flashy person and telling you, do this, do that. I'm telling you, be fucking boring. Be boring. Get 25 pips a week. 25 pips a week. If you can do that, you can make a lot of money if you're consistent. You can make that whatever you want it to be, but you can still lose your ass aiming for that 25 pips a week. If you are not diligent, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're reckless, if you're a gambler at heart, you'll do that. But if you go through that 2020 mentorship properly once more and you find consistency and maybe you get funded and now you're taking withdrawals from that funded account and you're getting paid. I have students all around the world that are reporting that. They're bringing their receipts. They're showing you on, on their own social media accounts and sending it to me on my Twitter. Young man went to the number two spot on the FTMO leaderboard, 70 grand. You know, that, that that's results, folks. You know, that's not contrived. That's not paper trading. That, that, to me, that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed, <laughs> okay? But there's a lot of other folks that get these smaller little victories that just want to stay quiet and private. And they're not obligated to share their fucking experiences with you. Just like I'm not obligated to do shit for you either. But I love doing it. I love it. But I'm not obligated to any of you. And when you start making money and you see these people trolling what you've learned, you're not fucking obligated to share anything with these people. These people are miserable. They're miserable or they're competitors and they're just getting their asses kicked by what I'm doing, which is both entertaining. But if you go through that 2022 mentorship and you're consistent and you want to increase your understanding, what's the next logical step in learning? Go through the core content. It's a lot. It is a lot. But because you have that model to work with, you'll be able to respect and understand better where those concepts could be plugged in and where others may not even be of any interest to you. You do not, let me underscore this and preface it before I go any further. You do not need core content lessons. That model I have made now more private mentorship students consistent and profitable by sharing that publicly. And they went through several years of mentorship with me because they were trying to do everything. They're trying to place all these tools in the proper sequence. There isn't a sequence where you put all these things in the right place. Now, there's a way of leaning on certain approaches to like, for instance, commitment to traders. Okay, that's a, that's a long-term tool for intermediate term trading. It's useful in that regard. Could you use it as a backup or a confluence for your day trades and you're trading only in that direction? Sure, there's nothing wrong with that. Do I need it? Fuck no. You don't need it either. SMT, I try to look for that in every single trade, but I don't demand it. it if, if it doesn't exist in the trade, I'm not going to be afraid to still take it. I'm going to still take the trade if I see that there's a reason for it to go to a specific point of liquidity. If I know where the draw liquidity is and I'm in there at the right time of the day and I know everything's in, on my side and they've already worked the opposite end of liquidity, if they've taken buy side and I know they're going to be reaching for and co going, going, <laughs> uh, counterparting with the uh, sell side, then I'm going to take the trade. If I see a bearish breaker, if I see a institutional order flow entry drill, which is a partial tap into a fair value gap, um, you're all wanting to know, well, when is a fair value gap closed and when is it left open? That That's what charter members learned. You're not entitled to that. So that's the reason why I don't answer a lot of your questions from core content. That's the reason why core content videos have the comment section turned off because I don't owe you those answers. Okay, but I did share those videos to keep people from wanting to buy them from other people scamming and frauding. But they are useful to you if you have an understanding about what it is you're trying to do. And that 2022 mentorship model is the nuts and bolts to going out there and making ends meet. Can you turn into a millionaire with it? 
I personally believe you can. Can you blow your account and lose money? Yep. If you break every rule I've shown in that, yes, you will. If you follow every rule in there, but you do poor risk management, money management, you will still blow your account. Let me say that again because you probably didn't hear me. You can do everything right in terms of charting and entry and everything, but if you over leverage, risk too much, or you're not properly managing your trades, you can still blow your account. How could that happen? By not knowing how to handle yourself when you lose, you'll go in there and you'll push a button. Okay, you do, you do something wrong. No problem. The average student or trader will say, okay, let me reevaluate. Is the trade still valid? Not, oh, no, 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 no. I'm right. Let me go in there and do this again. Well, that's imposing your will. You can't do that in the marketplace. You, your will is insignificant compared to the market. The market can do whatever the fuck it wants to do. And the people that run it, they make the rules. They change everything. If they want to reprice it to wherever they want to reprice it, you can't change it by your buying and selling pressure horseshit. Your harmonic patterns, your Elliott Wave, all that stuff, your order blocks. <laughs> I'll throw my shit in the, in the hat too. When there's manual intervention, nothing fucking works. You are all wrecked, okay? And we're in that category too. We would fall victim in those instances, and there's no way to prevent that. So there's always risk, always. But what happens if you go through core content? And there's other videos. What should you go into next? Um, personally, I think that you should go through the Market Maker Primer course. So the, the best case scenario, looking back and mentoring again publicly and all the questions and, and the things that I saw come up as inquiries, I think the proper order would be 2022 mentorship. Study that first because that gives you right into the charts. It gives you something that gives you context. What is it you're going to be doing? If you learn everything from my YouTube channel, what's it look like? When it works, what's it look like? This is one interpretation of it, okay? It's easy. It's straight to the point. And you also see people all around the world making money with it, so there's proof. The second thing is to build understanding and fortify opportunities that can be used in other time frames, not just intraday, by using the core content. So go through all 12 months core content, study that. And whatever resonates with you, you pull out. Everything that doesn't resonate with you, just ignore it. I don't know why everybody makes a big deal about this, but you, there are things that are just not going to be pertinent to you as a trader in the style that you're trying to trade. And I don't take any offense to that. I'm, I'm, I'm practical. But you need to be practical with yourself as a, as a developing student. you got to be realistic and practical with yourself. You're not going to be able to learn this real quick. You're not going to be getting rich real quick. You're not going to be able to tell your boss, fuck off. I just watched this video series. You're done. You're fired because th that's not what you should be doing, <laughs> okay? And uh, it makes me think about a video uh, suggestion I saw this morning. <laughs> I woke up and I was on Twitter. I mean, not Twitter, uh, YouTube. And I saw it, it was a video that said, uh, how, to, how to day trade working full-time and not get fired. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who did it, but uh, I just saw it. I thought it was funny, but. I mean, that's a series I should do, but uh, <laughs> once you go through the 2022, go through core content and then go through the market maker primer course. Okay. If you do that, I think honestly, that is real good for the technical side, but anywhere in between them, wherever you feel like you need it, you should go through the, like the ends series where it kind of like reminds you of what it is you're doing that is a mission statement type of teaching it grounds you into thinking okay i'm not out here trying to promote millionaire mindset to you go out here and you want to be living the instagram life i'm out here trying to help people find a way to get a second income that's it and if it works out that you make 200 dollars a week or 250 dollars a week and it's an extra thousand dollars a month you know what folks that is in these times it's helpful because I have a lot of money, and it costs me a lot of money when I'm out to the grocery store. And I always think to my wife all the time, like, how are people doing this? It's hard. Like, it's really hard now. And I overpaid a lot for cars this year. And, you know, this house I purchased, I knew I was paying at an inflated rate. I don't care. I don't have – I have 
the funds to be able to do it and it doesn't hurt me but the average person out there you know you're maybe being priced out of a house you may be priced out with the interest rates okay and if you can make an extra thousand dollars a month and i'm not promising that everybody's going to do that but i firmly believe that it's within the realm of possible for the majority of you that do work diligently towards mastering yourself and controlling risk and you'll see that these things they statistically have an edge but you skew that edge as a trader that that individual that comes into this so you're going to need to listen to some things to remind you what it is that's going to cause you problems and you might want to listen to the series i did where if i could go back and tell myself what i know now at 20 years old because i had to live two different lives hiding from a gold digger and I don't have any shame in saying that. And some of you ladies out there may think, oh, you're a deadbeat asshole. You didn't take care of your kids. My kids were taken care of. My kid, my, my oldest son, he was taken care of. We had joint custody. But I had to hide a lot of things and, and live a certain way to keep my gold digging affair, which I was not aware that she was married when I slept with her. And I own it. It's mine. I did it, you know. But you know, these things were a result of me trying to do what you see these Instagrammers do today, these living fast kind of people. And I invited that kind of stuff into my life and not knowing, I was naive and this woman knew that I had something and she wanted it. And I found myself in a situation where I had brought a, a person in the world that we didn't sit down and say, hey, let's have a child together. She had a relationship that she was married and a son that I didn't know about. And I fell victim to that situation. And I talked to you through that and I encourage my own children. I'm actually talking to my sons in all of these videos on YouTube. I'm talking to them. And because I'm pouring my heart out, I'm talking to them with my vision of their faces in my mind as I'm talking to them. It makes it feel like I'm talking to you because it's sincere, number one. Two, it's real. It's, it's real. And if you don't listen to those types of lessons and you do the same things I've done, when I was younger, you're going to invite those types of things into your life and it will wreck all kinds of progress. Like I think to myself all the time, like I know how these markets work and I also know how I work. I know how I self-sabotage. I know how I get a case of the ass where I think nobody's better than me. And I know all of these character flaws. I have all these character flaws like everybody else, but I also have greater disadvantages because I have a mental disorder where I have a chemical imbalance that just will not relent sometimes. And you you experienced it obviously several times listening to these Twitter spaces where I'm at the mercy of whatever I'm feeling at the moment. And some of you have reported that you have these same things. And it's hard, isn't it? But if you don't have a way to connect with the mentor, that's teaching you and know that that's something that yes, in some many, many ways it can be viewed as a hindrance or an obstacle, but there's a way through that too. And it's not going to be easy. And for folks that don't have that, if you're not bipolar you know, and you're just a, a normal person, you know, I envy that because I don't know what that feels like, but you have an advantage over someone like me. And when I first started teaching on baby pips in 2009, 2010, that, uh, that social experiment that I, I introduced, I, I wanted to see, could I get the same result of other people coming up like, like I did? And I presented the content and the lessons in the order that I went through discovery. And unfortunately, it's not a matter of me failing. It's just I didn't get, I didn't get that test tube result where someone came out like me and obviously I went down a dozen different rabbit trails and the whole idea was how you're going to study ICT and content, but uh, you want to have a study journal. You want to go in with a mindset that you're doing it for a particular reason. You're not going to be distracted. You're not going to spend your time chasing social media entities and worshiping other people. And I'm on the top of that list. Okay, showing appreciation, that's a respectful thing, yes, but you don't need to constantly lavish me with love and all that other stuff. You focus on you. And every time you watch a video and every time you study in the charts, 
you read your mission statement. What is it, what is it you're doing? Why are you doing it? And what is that goal and result? Everything you do should be aiming in that direction. If everything you're doing right now is opposed or slight deviation from that direction, you're wasting your fucking time. You're wasting your time because you have to have a course, a direction. You have to know where your bearings are. And you got to constantly be working in that direction. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to you're going to fall to the wayside because you've done something too soon, rushing to get in there and start pushing buttons and making money. Everybody right now, everybody wants to go get out, go out and get funded. Because they see folks tweeting to me, "Hey, I'm funded now. Hey, I'm getting a payout now." Well, what does that create in weak-minded individuals? And folks, when I say weak-minded, I'm not trying to say you're stupid. I'm not saying you're daft. I'm not saying you're a you know a dense person or a dunce. <laughs> I'm saying that it's normal for you to want to rush into that. You want to do what everybody else is doing. And if they're doing something that's making money, guess what? Everybody was wanting to do that. But I'm unfortunately that kind of guy that's going to tell you, you're going to have to work before you get there. You're going to have to study a lot. And you're going to have to defer weekend things that you usually do. You're going to have to change your lifestyle and save money, change your spending habits, remove, maybe even remove certain types of friends and possibly family members from your influence or removing their influence from you. And I had to do that, and it didn't feel right. It didn't feel normal. It felt like I was being – well, I felt like I was isolating myself through depression. but. These were conscious decisions I made. It wasn't like I reduced my circle of influence because of anxiety because I had that experience too when 2001 happened. I ended up having generalized anxiety and developed agoraphobia, which is a fear of being around other people. And it was all based on September 11th you know, when those buildings and such in New York happened. And everything was a, a, a source of fear for me. But I don't have any of that kind of fear, like nothing. Like I'll walk out there in a burning building. I don't give two shits. I ain't worried about nothing now. But that generalized anxiety, that fear, uh, that will creep into you in this trading endeavor faster and when you're not prepared for it. And it'll, it'll completely derail you. It'll take you completely out of their focus. You won't know what it is you're doing, and you'll lose sight of why you're doing it. There's so many folks out there that have started doing this, and because they were not able to master themselves, and wrestle their internal demons, these things that are going to manifest themselves. You know these things that you do all the time. You, let me ask you a question. Like, Think about it like this. Have your personal relationships, have they been healthy? Now, for many of you young guys, it's probably going to be no. I'm going to tip you off on something right now. If your personal relationships, you know, long-term relationships or the ability to hold on to a long-term relationship, if that is a struggling point, I'm going to tell you something right now. You're going to fucking suck as a trader. You're going to suck because you are not going to commit to what's required to learn this. That's the reason why my students, the better students are the women because they're usually more committed to whatever endeavor they invest in. Think about it. When they get with you as a male, you know, they're usually the one that's hurt most because they've poured everything into it. They've signed on. If they're committed. And it's easier for a guy to walk away. So if you have those character flaws in your personal relationships, that's a warning sign that you have things that you're going to have to wrestle with, and you're going to try to put blinders on. And right now you're trying to ignore what I'm saying. You don't want to hear this. This is supposed to be about trading. No, this is about succeeding and, tr and training yourself properly, studying. You see, I don't give a fuck about cars and houses and bank account statements and who the fuck can win competitions. I care about successful students. That's what I want. And I know… What causes that success to be deferred or denied? 
And these are the factors that are going to come up and people don't write about it in books. They don't talk about it on their YouTube channels because it's going to immediately cause their audience to do what? Take inventory and it's not going to make them feel good about themselves. And they're not going to want to come back and watch their next fucking video because the last time they were there, they got a dose of reality and that reminded them that, hey, they're a fuck up. So it's better for you to hear someone that had that same fucking problem and how I fixed it. I owned it. It was the responsibility of my own. I made those mistakes. I had problems. I had commitment issues because my first wife left me. All these things I had, I had issues, I had chips on my shoulder. So I wanted to go out and prove to the world and her and her family members and my own family members and my friends that I could fucking do better than all of them. So when I went out there and I pushed that first trade, the option in orange juice futures, and some of you are thinking, you can trade orange juice? Yeah. <laughs> You used to be able to trade bacon, you know, pork bellies, but they don't trade them anymore. But I wanted to go out and prove myself because I needed to fix that pain when what I was doing was I'm using that pain as a reason to do something that the chart didn't tell me to do. And people still come to my content with those character flaws, those internal demons, and they're going to see an optimal trade entry in the chart. They're going to see a fair value gap, model 2022, in the chart. They're going to see a breaker in the chart. They're going to see everything they want to see. But really, what they want is an escape from that painful thing that they're feeling right now. They want to be distracted. And the worst thing you can do is use my videos as a distraction to those problems that's in you right now. You have to wrestle with them. You have to fix them. You have to take ownership and responsibility. If you cause those problems in your personal relationships, then you need to address the root causes of them. Change it because I'm going to tell you something. I could not find consistency when I was painfully hurting because my first wife left me. Because everything I was doing was just a reason to take away that pain. Much like a person that would use drugs, much like a person that would drink alcohol, I was self-medicating, distracting myself from the real problems because I felt like I wasn't worth it. She left me, and I was in school learning computer science, and I was telling her, look, I'm going to do well. Not, not, I wasn't a trader yet. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be a trader. I didn't know anything about trading for me as a career. I learned about it when I was 15 and 16 from my uncle, but I just didn't want to do it. But I was hurt. I wanted to do something to change that pain and make myself be viewed by everyone around me as, wow, you're successful. And if I heard other people say that, it would replace that painful inner voice of me saying, I fucking sucked as a husband. I didn't spend enough time with her, but I couldn't do that because I was going to school and working. And we were married when she was 16 and I'm 18. I had to get her parents' signature to approve the marriage. That was doomed. <laughs> but I loved her. And truth be told, I still love her. And, I, and my wife knows that. And I wouldn't leave my wife for her. But you know what it's like with your first. And anybody that says anything otherwise is a fucking liar. But that scarred me, and I wanted to fix that so bad. I was willing to do anything, and any kind of monetary loss. Hey, the fuck's that? I just lost my wife. How much more could I lose? Money, that's replaceable. I can't get my wife back. So for my first six years, I wrestled with that stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't fix it. I couldn't get through it. No book worked for me. No course worked for me. Everybody fucking failed me in my eyes as a mentor. Now, once I was able to fix those character flaws, then I was teachable. Now think about that. Because this is a really hard question. And a lot of you know this is true and you've ignored it and you tried to pretend it wasn't real for you. But are you really, at this moment right now, are you in a position to be taught effectively? 
or do you have something in you that's broken that's going to prevent you from really being diligent and suffer the normalcy of the ebbs and flows of winning and losing while you're learning how to do this because i'm going to be honest with you i think the majority of you are not and that's the why that's the reason why i talk to you the way i talk to you because i had to endure it too and i have a lot of students and they they're very honest with me and they wrestle with these things too and when they finally get through that they forgive themselves they forgive the people that hurt them like i forgive my wife my wife when i say my wife my first wife i often think and i had conversations with my wife several times when we have drives together i'm like she's like, what are you thinking right now i said if i can be honest with you and you not get angry i'm thinking right now i wish my wife could see me right now because when she left she didn't believe that anything i was going to ever do was going to be successful because she was a kid just like i was and she heard my same uncles and aunts and you know such talk down to us well talk down to me saying oh it's a pipe dream you're going to be working just like the rest of us so if you doubt it and then the and the person you're married to's own family members tell you in the, in the witness of your own attention that that person you're married to isn't going to be successful too you're young and impressionable so all of that weighed on her heavily and she was sexually abused since she was eight years old all of those things she had a lot of mental baggage and it was easy for her to do what just escape cut her losses short and i just want her to see you were wrong but i don't want to lose it going through that at the moment then that was hard like i didn't want to do anything I didn't want to hang around my friends. I didn't want to do shit. I stopped working out and it was just depression. And the only thing that motivated me was, you know what? I fuck computer science. Fuck that. My uncle talked about this trading shit and that book that I threw away into the corner because I bought this guy's course, Kent Roberts. I said, I'm going to go read that again and I'm going to go into this and I'm going to, I'm going to do that because if I can make money doing that, everybody's going to find that successful because uh you know there was a movie out there called uh, trading places it had uh dan Aykroyd and uh, eddie murphy in it really funny movie even it's it's dated but it's still funny i watched that and i was thinking to myself you know what i'm gonna be a comeback kid i'm gonna fucking do that okay i'm gonna be successful in trading commodities that's that was gonna be my my avenue now i didn't have what you have available to you and I'm not saying just me as a mentor. There's so many resources that's for free right now that you can tap into for information. Now, I'm not talking courses because there's a lot of that bullshit doesn't work, but resources at your fingertips. The, the thing I'm holding in my hand right now, talking into this stupid ass fucking cell phone that I can't stand carrying around, it has more information in it and uh, ability to do things that 25 years ago, our own president couldn't have this much control and power over. And, and he was the president. <laughs> so it's amazing what technology has developed in, in recent years and decades. But I needed to, to feel good about myself. So I went from re trying to replace a painful feeling of loss, depression, and, and self-worth being next to none to... I got to stop thinking like that and focus on the target. What am I trying to do here? Because if I'm just trying to replace a bad moment or feeling right now, maybe you're in a failed relationship. I have several women in my mentorship that have, some of them started the mentorship together with their male counterparty and they separated. As soon as they started seeing success, the male said, I'm out of here. And now they're dealing with, yes, they know how to trade but they can't trade now because they're hurt. And they're asking me, you know, how to fix that. The only way I could do it was number one, I turned to Christ, two, I focused on the task. What is it that I was trying to do? I was replacing a negative feeling. So that way I can have a, a feel good moment, replacing a bad moment. Okay. 
So how do you do that? Well, you, your mind can only focus on one thing. And being bipolar and obsessive, my mind races a thousand miles an hour and there's dozens of thoughts that are wrestling to try to be the one in the front of the line. And it's very difficult for me to focus like that. And you've probably seen it in this discussion too, because I'm all over the place. But hopefully you get what I'm saying here in, in the grand scheme of things. You have to focus on that mission statement. Why you're why are you doing this? Why are you listening to me? What do you hope to gain from that? Have you seen something in the things that I've taught or in my students that make you want to do that too? That's what you that's what you latch on to. You do not look at it as I'm gonna go in here every day because I'm pissed off about where I work at. I didn't get that raise, you know. Hang on, I gotta check out something real quick. All right, I thought she was talking to me. You know, fucking Carl, he's got, you know, employee of the week. You know, he's parking in the front. You're pissed off about that. Everybody is, you know, giving you some sort of reason off. So now you have resentment. You want to go in and you want to have a feel-good moment. You want to hit the lottery. So you're you're wanting to go in and trade on that reason alone. It may not be something simple and trivial is what I'm trying to be here. But there's something in your head at the moment right now that's motivating you to want to make money right now not just the necessity of making money everybody has that even me i have bills but there's something driving you that's causing the rush the not the rush of feel good but the impatience factor that impatience factor is what is going to undermine you and that's why i tell everybody don't rush through my videos that's the worst thing you can do because what you're doing is, is you're proving you're not going to be disciplined to do this. If you're not, sorry, if you heard my stomach, I'm, I haven't eaten anything yet. I haven't even drank any water yet. But I have so many folks that have gone through mentorship on YouTube, mentorship and private mentorship, and their complaint will be, but I watched all the videos. Okay, watching them, that's the minimum expectation. You've done the least. Well done. You got a participation award. But you have to fucking do the work. That means you have to sit down and you have to look at what the market did today after it already happened. And then how's that work inside of what we've done for the week? What's the range? What did today's work in price delivery, where it's highest high and it's lowest low, where are the trade formations that you can identify based on that 2022 model, where did they form? And how does that relate to what the weekly range has been for this present week and how we have worked with previous week and where is it drawing to on that daily and weekly chart you do that every single day you will not understand what it is that you're supposed to see the first couple of weeks doing it but because you'll be doing that and you're logging your charts and you're recording your observations and your questions and your concerns and your doubts and you put that in your journal you do not fucking send that to me in a text or a tweet or post it on a form you put it into a study journal and when that moment happens and if you are diligent about it you'll find that it happens within the first year oh here we go back to that year again i ain't got time for a year then you can't be a student of mine You hear that? You can't. You can't be a student of mine. You're coming here with an expectation of, I need to learn it the way I want to learn it. Then that means you know it. You know what it is you need to know. When you don't know what it is that you need to know. See, that's the arrogance and the impatience of this culture today. And that's what I get. I lose my impatience with the the folks today, and that's the reason why I built in a lot of shit that makes you have to work for it because I don't have time for people that are lazy because I know I can't fix your laziness. I can't fix that, but I can make people profitable. I can make them consistent. I can do that. I can lay the resources in their hands the right way, the right approach, and if they do that after they've fixed themselves, they have every advantage in the world of being consistently profitable. Will they lose money? Yes. Every trader loses money. 
but those losses won't incur to a degree where they lose their mind because they understand how they wreck themselves because, oh, I'm doing more trades than I should because I'm worrying about that bad feeling of that I have a losing trade. I have a losing trade. So what? Your spouse is going to ask you, did you make money today? No, I did something wrong. It didn't pan out. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it, honey. You will get there tomorrow or you'll get it back. That's the encouraging spouse. If you know that about your spouse that they're not going to be equipped to be like that, then you don't fucking talk about trading with your spouse. See how that works? You, you sit down with your spouse and say, look, how are you going to approach this if I lose money? Because if you lose your shit about it, we need to come to agreement right now before I go any further. This is what I'm willing to risk. This is what I'm willing to invest in time and money. Are you in agreement with that? That has to be sorted out because if you go in selfishly saying, look, woman, this is the way it is. And if you don't like it, there's a door. Don't let it hit you in the ass because I'm going to tell you something. She might do that. And you're going to see how impossible it is to fucking trade properly because your heart's going to walk out the door with her. Oh, no, it, ain't. it will. It fucking will. And if you don't think so, wait till you see her with somebody else. <laughs> Your, your trading will turn to shit real quick. So you have to worry about all those things that people don't write about in books. These young 20-year-olds, they don't even have relationships. They're not married. Okay, They're out there trying to taste, chase tail all the time. They're not going to talk to you about these things. They're going to be heavyweights in your development and in your continuity. But as a 50-year-old man, two marriages, five kids, two miscarriages, I have endured some things and I know how those things impacted me and I'm not ashamed to tell you how they impacted me because it's raw and it's real and I know that there are people out there like me and have got it worse you see I didn't have to pay child support when I got with that gold digger because I took extreme measures but we had joint custody so I did half she did half, and that was it. But some of you out here made poor choices, didn't manage your relationships well, and you've created children that you were not really responsible for, and now you have to pay a whole lot of money in child support. Own it. Be a fucking man and own it. Take care of it. And this is one way you can do that. And guess what? You could also become a positive role model for your child. That relationship failed, okay, but don't fail as a parent. But if you have those things wrestling with you know, all these failures in life, they're going to weigh on your decision-making. They're going to weigh on your development as a student. And to ignore them or pretend that that's not true, you're lying to yourself and you're wasting your fucking time because I'm telling you, every person – Every person has regrets. Every single one of us do. And if you've not wrestled with that and sorted it out and forgiven yourself and that other person, you're going to be motivated by all the wrong things. And my videos, my teachings, my mentorship, and even sitting down with me live pointing out shit before it happens in a chart next year is still going to fucking cause you to lose money. And because you are weak-minded, you're going to say – these things don't work, despite all the evidence saying otherwise. Because you need to say those things to exist. Because you can't take ownership. That you are the problem. Much like I was the problem when I first started. I was the problem. When I was 20 years old, everything. Larry Williams honestly could have sat down with me, okay, and said, here, this is what you do. Do this, do that. And I could have made money, and I still would have fucked it up. Now think about that. That's your fucking mentor telling you this. Michael Joe Huddleston, ICT himself, Larry Williams, could have invited me to his fucking home and spent months there teaching me in one-on-one. -on -one. And I could have made money with him helping me right there. And I would have went home, and guess what would happen? I would have, won I would have blown my fucking account still. I would have lost money still. And I would have fucking vilified him then. Why? Because I didn't have my shit together. 
my head wasn't right. I was going into trading for all the wrong reasons. I wanted to prove my self-worth to my ex-wife. I wanted the winner back. That's what I was doing it for. And you can't do that, folks. You can't have these self-worth driven purposes in trading. You can't. Now that's a byproduct of being consistently profitable. That happens, you know, as a natural order of things. But that shouldn't be, and it should not be ever the reason why you're pushing the button. Now it can be encouraging factors that keep you studying. But at any time you ever sit down, take a trade or push a trade button, whether it be demo, paper, or live, if the last thought you had in your mind was painful, hurtful, or envious, or wanting to prove something to somebody else, I promise you that trade is going to be toxic. It's going to be poison. And you don't get that in books. You don't get that from... 20 year old mentors on YouTube, Instagram. You don't get it from people that haven't really gone through some shit. It doesn't get more real than this. So, to study with me properly, that's the shit you got to sort out. It might be something as, as trivial as, you know, maybe in COVID you gained weight. Maybe it's bothering you. Maybe it's plaguing you. Maybe it's uh, uh, a health disorder that you developed, and it's it's taking the steam out of you. Maybe it's an injury. It doesn't have to be something on a rela relationship side of things, but something has you know, beaten you down to where you feel like your self worth is re has been reduced to to such a degree that you're now trying to do things. To distract you from that instead of just saying you know what this happened just like it happened to me i was a young man 18 years old got married to a 16 year old girl that i lost my virginity to i loved her she looked like alicia silverstone and she was just my heart and when she left a year and a half after marriage it fucked me up like it fucked me all up. And that's when I was really trying to be something I couldn't be before I was ready. I wanted to be what you hear me now. Like I, I know what I'm doing now. I know what I shouldn't be worrying about. I know what I should focus on. I know what I'm capable of. But I was in a rush to get that in a month. I wanted to be able to make a hundred thousand dollars a week then that was impossible for me but back then oh it was going to be possible because if i had to move mountains i'm going to do it like every 20 year old they think they can you know blow harder than the wind but these things are going to be real issues in your in your development and it's a it's not easy and i don't have fixes for everything but i do know root causes and there were root causes in mine and a lot of folks that talk about psychology and trading and talk about uh, mindset things they don't really touch on these topics because again it forces the audience to take personal inventory in their dark corners in everybody's life they don't want to revisit these things they don't want to have to say, you know what, you're right. I'm not as perfect as everybody else thinks I am. They don't, they don't know these things about me, and I don't want to make it known. You don't have to make it known publicly, but you have to wrestle with them personally and fix them. Because they will creep into your trading, your development, and they will hinder you. And in many cases, in, in, in the extreme, they will deny you success. And it's not because the concepts or the method doesn't work. It's because you're trying to do something that's impossible right from Jump Street. And you're being motivated to make decisions financially because you're emotionally charged. You're trying to feel good versus am I trading the model? Am I controlling 
in managing my personal risk? Am I following the rules when taking potential profits and getting those profits in parcels when it's made available to me? Or am I too worried about being perfect so that way I can brag about it to my friends and coworkers that I made the weekly salary of the highest paid person in your department? Carl. Fuck Carl. Fuck him. Fuck him in his parking spot. Fuck him in his fucking brown nosing. Fuck them. Okay, there's always going to be a fucking Carl. There's going to be Carl on social media. There's going to be Carl at your fucking jobs. There's going to be Carl at your fucking lodge. There's going to be in your pool fucking league, your bowling league, your fucking soccer team. There's always going to be a fucking Carl. There's always a fucking Carl. These people should not be an influence to you. What they're doing, that's their walk. That's their life. That's their thing. You're here to learn how to make fucking money. That's it. You're not here to look fucking cute. You're not here to be Billy Badass. You're not here for a fucking image. You're here to make money. Dinero. Okay, that's what you're here for. If you're not here to get the scratch, don't come over here. Because the way I do things, it isn't going to be sugar-coated. I'm not going to present this in a well-packaged program where everybody can subscribe to it. Say, well, I'm really glad that this this rant came play. You know, I can't make you feel good all the time. And you develop. Sometimes you need to have a woodshed moment. And most of you, and unfortunately it's the males, most of you are walking around with blinders on. You want the, here's the technical entries, here's the mumbo jumbo the fucking lingo ict talks about and hey, i'm doing trades like him but you're not sharing all the other times you're doing it wrong and you know that's the truth there's a lot of you that are very very busy very busy sharing your examples with me and i can tell who you are because of the level of examples you're sharing and you're only sharing the ones you're winning and you know that's the truth stop you're doing that because you want a like or heart by me and that's going to scratch that little itch that emotional nudge that you need that's distracting you from what the ones you did wrong you wasn't ready for that were you see when i taught people one-on-one they didn't have that luxury of hiding what they were failing in they showed every everything And that's the best way to learn. Be honest. If you've done something wrong, share that and say, this is what I did wrong. And this is what I've taken away from that experience. How many of my students are doing that on Twitter? If there's five, that's more than I thought. But everybody's showing you what? The positive. I'm encouraging you all to start sharing where you did it wrong, what you thought you saw on the chart and what you gleaned from that error. Because that will be a huge encouragement to the community. And also it'll encourage me as a mentor because I lose too. I do it wrong sometimes. There's no shame in that. But you have to, number one, know in the heart of hearts, every facet in your being When you go in and you start pushing that button, you're doing it because you know you're following that model. You're not trying to replace a bad feeling, a bad thought, or a sense of self-worth. So that's how you should go and study an ICT concept. If you don't go into the content with a clear mindset, you're not going in there hindered, with shit that's bogging you down emotionally and psychologically, your boyfriend left you, your girlfriend left you, you you just got fired, you know, all that shit, you know, you gotta come to terms with all that stuff. And I'm not equipped to know all the answers or solutions to all those things. I don't claim to know those things, but I can tell you, your mentor, the guy talking to you right now, I had that kind of stuff too. I was not exempt from that. And it made it harder for me, it did. And when I had initial success, when I had it, I had it earlier than six years, but I wanted it to be better. So I changed a lot of things and it went to a shit show because I wanted it to be really superhuman, perfect. 
I had to go back to the drawing board. I really had it like three years, just really technically like two and a, two and three quarters years. But then I spent you know three years plus fucking around tinkering with it, which takes you also to another point. If you find your successful model in the 2022 mentorship, don't go any further. Wait a minute. You're telling people not to watch your videos, but don't you get ad revenue? Yeah, I get ad revenue. But I'm also more inclined to seeing you succeed because I get my rocks off when people are finding consistency and they learned how to do this properly and they don't need to hold my hand. That's how I teach. I never invite the opportunity for you to be holding my hand or I'm holding your seat on your bicycle while you're pedaling. Whether you realize it or not, you feel like I've been holding the seat for you because you have all these videos where I'm talking. But I wasn't there when you pushed those buttons. I am not there when you finally get to that point of success. I'm not there. You just remember hearing me. But you did it. Just like your dad is running along that bicycle. Okay, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. And his hand is at his side. Not that bicycle seat. But you feel confident. Because you're trusting. The process. So I'm not sure if you got anything out of this one. But I want you to go into 2023 with that mindset. How you should go into your teachings and studying and more specifically taking personal ownership of your character flaws and the things that are going to be motivating you. And if it's not the right things that's motivating you, go exercise, go work out, go do something to get that negative energy burnt off and then go and do your studies. Don't go in mad. If you're hurt, someone hurt your feelings or if you're feeling sick, don't study. You have to have an optimal mindset when you sit down and you're studying in either the videos or in charting because you're pre you're preventing optimal learning. So after the other courses and series in my YouTube channel, you, you pick them and choose them from whatever you want to go on next. But I think that what I just gave you here is plenty. You know, And the easiest way is to watch all of them. But you should all start with 2022 mentorship because that goes right to the ground running. This is what it looks like in trading. This is a model. This is a approach. This is a, a system. And it repeats and you can find it on all time frames and it can be adjusted and scaled to any time frame. It doesn't have to be an intraday model. So this is going to be the close and I will wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I will probably send you a tweet saying so, uh, but that will be the last time I I post until February 7th. I know I've been being funny and teasing you all going out the door, but I am absolutely closed shop today. We got through the last week of uh, what I like to see in terms of the holidays schedule coming to a close, and now I will be in a full holiday swing. And for everyone that's sending me uh, cards and letters and gifts and things. Thank you so very much. I, it's very touching. And I'll talk to you on February 7th, 2023. Be safe.